Yeah, he just wanted to get his clap out again. Clapperboard. Um, right. Um, yeah. Cool. I'm been so busy. He looked stressed when he came in. I did. <laughs> he looked so. I he was, looked like, I was now. like, hi, and he was like, I'm so busy, and I was like, oh, is well. he a grumpy boy today? No, no, he's just busy. No, I'm not grumpy at all. I'm just like, I think I'm really. I need a PA. I'm running on like a schedule. So like, when I say let's get it to start at this time. I like in my mind I'm I know that I have to leave here at like seven, so therefore Same, to be fair. Yeah, so therefore you start getting really funny about like punctuality and stuff like that. And uh, and fair enough, you you know, you boys are busy too, so it's just making sure But anyway, yeah, work is mad. I've been You don't have a job. <laughs> I do still. <laughs> barely. Yeah, barely. Hanging on hanging on. Today I was um filming some more restaurant content. I'm seen to be doing a lot of restaurant content. Oh, yeah, I've seen. Food looks good. And um, mm. our place I was at today, I mean, I'm trying to be good diet wise at the moment, but basically you're allowed to eat stuff after you've taken content of it. And it was like roast dinners. So it's like incredible Yorkshire. I did a time lapse of a Yorkshire pudding growing in the oven, which was pretty was cool. cool. Um, but just like really high quality like food. It's so, like just, they were like, there's piles of Yorkshire puddings. They're like, just help yourself. It's like, I, I, I would love to. They had to draw the line though, mm. because they made, I, I filmed it from scratch crumpets from Ooh. scratch I'm out. I'm out. and and they made their own whipped burnt butter to spread on it so burnt butter i don't know if you've had it it's is like it's like butter but elevate it's like this kind of uh, what it does to it it's unbelievable but this spread on that crumpet was just like oh my god i could i had i had to i had to do it so yeah that I was my hate crumpets that was my treat today you hate crumpets look I actually have a story as to why I hate crumpets right, no, okay. no I have a story if, you ready for this? hang on if this story has got anything to do with your bum hole no it actually doesn't okay, All right, look, how can you hate crumpets alright so I'm going to expose myself on camera I'm, people have pivoted if I hear something so basically I want to clarify I was 15 years old when this happened so please acknowledge I'm 13 years ago I was 15 years old basically I used to be a bit of a, a young a wild one I used to be a bit reckless when I was a, a wee boy and I used to smoke the marijuanas when I was like 15. Anyway, so be Smoke me. of the doobs. Long story short is, at the time, my friend stole some things that he probably shouldn't have stolen. Turns out it was crack. Anyway, we digress. Smoked crack. Irrelevant. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Accidents, well, hang on a minute. Yeah. This story's elevated. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 we we smoked, I don't It's gone to north to 60 very well, fast. The, the, the whole story was essentially, he said, he's like, do you want to smoke this? Obviously, me being 15, thinking I was really cool and actually yeah. oblivious to life. He was like, I was like, yeah, mouth. that's really cool. Turns out it was laced with crack. Long story, that was a bad time. And the last thing I ate before I went to bed that shortly after was a crumpet. And I was her- violently ill for like six days. I bear in mind, I was, I must have been nine stone. I was a skinny boy. And I dropped just shy of a stone and a half in six mm-hmm. days of fluid and food. I was being, for the first, this could be quite graphic, I don't apologize. I was like black tar. I was being sick for like days. Check it, it is recording. And I got really ill, like horrendously ill. But the last thing, um, I want to clarify, that's when I decided to retire from doing drugs. That's actually a lie. We obviously had the prescription issue in many years later. But that's another story. Um, <laughs> prescription gate. <laughs> and which was, which was also a dark web issue. Again, another story. Oh, the dark web. I've got loads of stories about the dark oh, web. Yeah, well, Can we do so, a dark web episode then? Well, 100%. I talk about buying drugs online, Oxycontin and Benzos. Oh, and a bad time. Yeah, that's, oh, that's the dark web. Worst things you and can this buy is why on. we have Harry on the show, because he brings the kind of content that we can't bring. Yeah. But you can buy worse than drugs. Oh, I, I've, we nearly did. Allegedly, I've seen. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, the last thing I ate, so after, it, after smoking whatever it was laced with crack, I ate a crumpet and got really sick. And because the last thing I ate was a crumpet, now the thought of crumpets... Yeah, really I understand real. that. I have the same with, uh, for quite a few years, coconut water, because I came in drunk one night and thought that the way I was going to not be hung over the next day I was drinking two liters of coconut water really? <laughs> that's a bad idea I, like, I don't drink so it I literally, tell you, you know like the, f- the big cartons I downed yeah. it when I got in and then I just vom- vommed it straight back up and ever since then I haven't really been a massive fan of coconut yeah. water that's like me and bounties uh, not because of drugs to clarify this because I actually had food poisoning and I ate a bounty but uh, like after I'd obviously I love a bounty I, I had food poisoning eating pork and now when I eat pork I'm just a bit like Anyway, no, I think pork's a bit overrated. Anyway, I'm going to be honest with you, don't yeah. think you're missing out. Like bacon, everyone's like, oh, meat bacon's chat. The best Welcome to meat chat. Yeah, like, so like, pork, pork's overrated. Pork's but like overrated. I'm, bacon, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. But would I sacrifice a limb for it? Like people claim, probably no, not. No, no, I, no could, I, could, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could never eat pork again in my life, and I wouldn't cry. Do about you know it. the thing about mm. pork is like pigs are, are like cute dogs. They're, they're, they're yeah. like they, they've got the same kind of attitude. I, I, I don't, I don't want to go there because I start getting stressed out about it. 
I'm not vegan, but I probably should be. Um, yeah, and oh, moving swiftly on because I feel like we need to move away. <laughs> don't from do the drugs, vomiting. kids. Yeah, yeah, don't go on the dark web either. Yeah, uh, other, yeah, other things that have happened this week. I went to the dentist, went to the hygienist, and had my teeth uh, cleaned, which was nice. Well, it feels weird, doesn't it? Oh my god! Like when they're pr- like properly clawing away at you, and I'm not saying like I've got clean teeth. My teeth are not bad, right? They're quite white, um, which is good. But it's round the wisdom teeth, which is your bits you can't mm, always get scraping. to. Scraping, mm. and it's like they're using a claw hammer, and you feel it. <laughs> Uh, but this yeah. should be a good time to mention I hate the dentist I'm very scared of it so see, yeah to be fair I also I've uh, had some bad experiences at the dentist yeah. see I've never had a filling I've never had a tooth out I've never had a single thing I've had a syringe teeth. snap in my mouth at Ooh, the dentist steady on I have I, that, that's for another episode but I is yeah, it yeah. is it a whole episode you know what? If it was for me, I'm not going. I've got. Some, we could actually. Yeah, we could do a dental. A dental. We episode. could just do a phobia episode. It's first things episode, we we're afraid of. First episode of December. Dental December. There Den- we go. Dental. <laughs> yeah. I've nailed it. Dental, dental December. Dental. Dental Health Month. Dental Health yeah, Awareness. That's quite good. I do. Okay. I actually haven't been gingivitis. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I know that from recess. No, look. Uh, seriously, going to going to your dentist on a regular basis will save you having problems at the end of the day. Yeah. So I I've, I've basically sat down to him and he's like, he started talking about flossing, and I'm like, look, mate, I'm not. Look, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I haven't got time for flossing. All right, brushing, fine. I'll brush twice a day. I'm religious at that. But flossing, I'm sorry. I'm quite happy. I'm going to pay you, right? I'm just going to come see you every four months to clean my teeth for me so I don't have to floss. He's like, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Done deal. End of story. Game over. Oh, I wish I was thinking about that. thing is, I, I had a bad lot. dental experience when I was abroad. So when I lived oh. in China, can you imagine going to a dentist that doesn't even speak the same language as you? I mean, that was, that was my... That's your own silly fault, frankly. <coughs> well, for being How a, dare you? For, for How for dare you? Going and trying around. things. <laughs> How dare you leave motherland? See, I would, I would ask you what time the appointment was, but I think we you all can't know. make that joke anymore. No. To be fair, Katie literally had an appointment at the dentist the other day for 2.30, t- and she, she thought they were joking. She was like, ha ha. But seriously. No, we'll see you at uh, half past two. Yeah, <laughs> <You're> literally. Like, <laughs> oh. Get it? 2.30? <laughs> yeah. T- anyway. He... What have you two been up to? I've given you me. You've had me. He's, that's he's it. given us him. Talk about your new car, Harry. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's not do Top Gear chat again. <laughs> brum, brum, Look, he, he got his. He got his cover photo. Thanks to that. That's fine. We don't need to brum, go there again. Funny, I like that. He's got a new. That was a good he's, one. Got a, brum, he, brum, he's got a new slash old car, which he is, goes. He goes. <laughs> that's what it does. Brilliant. That's the noise it makes. So somehow you brought it back round to toilet sounds. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we know and love. <laughs> Can see if not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. Plus everything. Uh, but yeah, uh, nothing's really happened with me apart from not a lot, really. Not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. I've just been working. Did I, I went to Belgium in between the last episode for a day. That was good. Oh, for a day? Yeah. Well, I DJ'd in Manchester on the Friday night. Eyeball pool. That's, <laughs> All I do that's is shout out that film. I then had to that's drive so back at midnight uh, and not fall asleep. I literally nearly did fall asleep on the motorway, which was very, very scary. Be very careful with that, people. We've done it. And um, and then I had to be, got home at 3 a.m., two hours sleep, got picked up at half five to drive to Belgium. Fortunately, I wasn't doing the driving. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, but yeah, Belgium's cool. I like Belgium. It's a nice place. Drank some cherry beer because it's low alcohol percentage and it tastes uh, nice because I don't like the taste of beer. Don't blame me. Do you know? Nah, don't. Do you know what? If I think not liking the taste of beer is the sole reason why I'm, why I'm in fitness because it meant that me getting into bodybuilding wasn't giving up much but you know some people you get a client maybe you might have had clients and they just love beer and they're like but I, I yeah don't I don't like want. people who love wine love a glass mm, of wine so like, I'm not gonna yeah. lie I tried the wine once it tastes like a moldy piss don't ask how I know what that tastes like. Maybe you're not it. drinking. Uh, to be fair, I, a good glass of wine, I don't mind it. However, I don't crave it. You know, like how people crave beer on a sunny day. Never had that. Sometimes if I'm feeling a bit naughty, I crave a Coca-Cola. Yes. Like, that, I love the fizz, but other Coke, that, I love water. Give me the fizz. Coke Zero on a sunny day. Oof. I'm there. Loads of ice, bit of lime. If it's going in my mouth with no calories, get out. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> is don't that don't just disrespect unless it's water. Is this, why your, is this why your OnlyFans career never t- took off? Because if it's no calories, then don't bother. Do you know, someone mentioned a tier for no OnlyFans yesterday, and I was like, that'd be the, honestly, I, I'm doing you all a favour not showing you yeah. that. Because if you don't have problems and nightmares now, you will. If you want to sign up to mine, guys, you know where I am. Just hit me up. It's all good. Right, yeah, he goes under the alias Fartin Martin. Guess what he does? <laughs> <laughs> Cupcakes. <laughs> for sale 
Anyway, right. So uh, we've oh, got. I, I don't have any news. Carry on. No, no news. <laughs> well, I mean, you do, don't you? One day, no, you'll, one day really. you'll bring us something good. Yeah. Something well, no. Good. The thing is, I'm I'm doing lots of things, but I don't. I'm not ready to talk about them yet. Before um, we move into the show, someone did leave us a nice message as part of a Q and A, um, oh, which you. I wanted to read out, and this is from Lena uh, from Germany. Oh, who, who did ask some questions, which I will pull up later. Um, but she said, uh, at the end of it, she said, so from now on, it's just love and appreciation for you guys. I love listening to you. You really calm me down and listening to the pod has helped me through some dark times. You made me feel less alone in times when my anxiety told me I was alone and held me captive in my own mind. Lots of love for Harry and his advocacy for mental health. From Lena in Germany. That's really sweet. I like you. I made my, my made my day reading that's that. That's really nice. It's really nice. Also, someone found us calming, which yeah, honestly, that's we wild. are chaotic energy. I fart multiple times, like the, like make <laughs> fart noises, and Chris gets very angry, very grumpy. Boy, I don't get angry. I just oh, feel like I've, 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 you're 28 years old. You still talk about farting. You're bored of it. <laughs> but like when I when I ag- when I ag- uh, when I ages ago applied for that local BBC radio presenting thing, they asked for like examples of your previous work. And no I, chance. I can't put this on there. No yeah, chance. You, you work with the. Oh, I'm able to. The fac- hard to you, work with. Yeah. You could just clip the intro, and then that'd be like, "Where's the rest of it?" Nah, you don't yeah, need to hear the rest good. of it. It's all good, mate. It's all good. Um, but thank you very much for the kind message. You're you're my friend. Please message us, and we can be friends. Yes, and look at us being really consistent. This is uh, literally two, uh, you know, weeks apart. There's no two months apart. No craziness. We're here. We're on it. We're present. Mm. Present. Oh, go on. You look uncertain. No, no, what? No, there's no uncertainty. I was just, you know, good for us. Yeah, good for us indeed. Good stuff. And we will be here in another two weeks, won't we? Yes. What days? Two weeks? Uh, Yeah, go on then. Thursday the something or others. It'll be Thursday the 3rd of November. We'll be hitting Guy Fawkes times. Fireworks special. Fireworks special. Halloween fireworks special combined. Should we get in fancy dress? Fancy we do dress. it. Should we do a Halloween fancy dress? So what I'm thinking is, hear me out. Yeah, don't say no yet. Just wait for it. Fireworks on the table. Boom. See what happens. Pumpkin. Yes. Fire, fireworks. Pumpkin. Live table. pumpkin carving. Fireworks. While we're table. podcasting, so we can just yeah. be chatting away. Big and just rocket. Mm. See what happens. Okay. I am. Um, I nearly was. It's not a no. I was nearly killed by a firework <laughs> at oh. at garden firework party. Did you try to dodge it? Yes, I had to. Okay, then it's good. I have a similar story. Literally had to. Mm. Um, I was at, this was years ago, at a friend's firework party, and uh, they obviously went, bought one of those boxes of fireworks. Oh, the one that goes, yes. boom, uh, boom. You set fire to it, and then it systematically does all of the fireworks. Um, however, they, their garden, the gr- so their pa- they had a patio and then a lawn, but the lawn went uphill. Oh, and it was pointing. Yeah, so therefore the box was essentially at slight angle towards the house okay really love it love that shortly love after that. they lit it it fell over t- and pointed directly at the patio so Good essentially was. it was like iron man unloading like a full barrage <laughs> of attack on everyone at the patio including one uh, do you, have you seen um the film robin hood prince of thieves yeah yeah you know the bit with the flaming arrow that's coming in the, the camera shots, the arrow's coming straight that towards was, the, camera. the camera. That was I was the camera and the firework was heading straight towards my face like a laser. And I literally had to do my best kind of Neo from the Matrix impersonation. See, Otherwise I would have been fucking blown in the what face. What I would have done is just lick your fingers, pss, put it out. Just grabbed it. Bullet. Or, yeah, all you do is throw it back or yeah. slap it. Punch Trump. it out the air. Yeah. Cross chop. <laughs> Catching yeah. your teeth. Yeah, fine. Okay, like Penn and Teller. Yeah. Oh, I used to love them. Bullet catchers. So they're, they're still doing their stuff. They, when they used to do the uh, Can You Fool Us thing. Yeah, they Incredible. still do that, I think. That yeah. was quite good. Yeah. Do you like magic? I like magic. There are some really I, I, good magic I, shows yeah. on, on Netflix, actually. I wouldn't People say, doing street magic. I wouldn't say I, I like actively look for it, but if I see it on YouTube, I'm like, that's impressive. Like, that's mm. good. Yes. You've tricked me. It's, and I'm, it's I'm, impressive. I'm easy to trick, to be honest, so it's not hard. <laughs> you are easily tricked. Good gullible. Bless him. A little bit. A little, a little bit. bit Bless him. Anyway, look, I feel like, uh, I think we're ready. Go. Oh, that, that, that was a very, very loud <sighs> go. Aggressive. I'm feeling it? a bit riled up. You're oh. a bit riled up. You've got something to offer. It's because of me eating cookies. Oh, my God. Right, I'll anyways, go to the gym after. Enough of that.
Yo, good evening. I don't know why I said yo, that's really weird, but we're back. It's me, it's Christy <laughs> Fellows, it's him, it's Michael Carter, and it's him, it's Harry Moore. And Hello. This is Pump Fiction, and it's good to be here again. This is episode, what is it? 16. Well done. Well, well done. You remembered, it's episode 16. And uh, Write that down. Yes, it's 16. Very happy to have made it this far. Thank you for following to this point, for watching on YouTube. If you're here, you can see me pointing, and if not, then you're listening on many, one of the many audio platforms. Probably Spotify. Probably Spotify. Yeah. But we, you know, we love all of you, but thank you again. Um, good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Hi. You two are well, I see. Mm. Mm. Good. I, I don't know sleep. why I talk like we haven't just already done that preamble when I do this, but it feels professional to do that. It sets the tone. Yes. And that's, that's what's important. Yes, it separates the waffle from the, the meat, the spam from the ham. Oh, did double you, double do meats. You know, never, There's I've lots never of meats. Spam With spam, life. you know, like spam is is shit email. Ha- I've never put in, ham. Say, ham yeah. is what they call real email. I've oh. never put spam in my mouth, and I never will. It's scary. Have you me. never eaten spam no, before, even like, out the tin? No, nah, I remember I climbed. Um, That's the next episode. I climbed uh, like I think it's snow or something. Special. Just spam after COVID, spesh. And my friend just bought. Who I remember just bought. A in a spam I was like you, you're a creature then he left it in his car open for like three well, months well no wonder you're not going to eat that and then after he take it out of the car he's like oh I left this in there but right, it's summer yammed it I'm like Bleh. that stuff though it can last through wars yeah so that's what concerns me right we'll ah. bring that for the next episode guys don't worry uh, right so yeah this episode 16 uh, we've got a couple of topics for you as always a um, couple of interesting ones I feel and they're quite personal ones to me this time um, and there's a lot of it pertains to how people around you affect your journey and also what happens when, you know, social things happen. We're coming up to Christmas. Obviously, it's a busy time, right? Busy social calendars filling up for you too, Christmas? No, not really. I'm going to like, being <laughs> yeah, really, not really, yeah, not really. I'll, be honest, I'll probably say, uh, boys, you want to do a Christmas podcast, like Christmas meal together, us three? Yeah, that'd be that's nice. pretty much it. Other than that, uh, I'm just going to work a lot. I quite like the mm. idea of a Christmas meal the three I of us. Like Christmas is my favourite day of the year is it mince pies yeah. no I've never had one in my life <gasps> oh my god right spam and mince pies coming up oh uh, no that's a lie I have had a mince pie and it tastes like arsehole right, okay. and I know what that tastes I like I used to think that mince pies had mince meat like beef mince pie that's why them. I didn't eat them for <laughs> see look <laughs> at the outrage <laughs> that's why I didn't eat them for so long because I thought they had actual mince in but then I actually had one and realised it was it was not mince and realised it actually just doesn't so, taste um, very nice just quickly um, I am auditioning for two new presenters that have grown up sensibilities that like wine nice foods um, you know sociable people long you know, walks on the beach long walks on the beach <laughs> no, just normal stuff okay I'm, I'm quite happy to, to get rid of non mince pie vibes can we here. notice something there that he didn't actively say that he doesn't want the new presenter to make fart noises to talk about poo therefore by <laughs> default he enjoys the discussion and actually encourages it because it's something he likes and we are looking for someone that can just turn the camera on because we will just talk at each other for yeah. hours <laughs> yeah, they do rely on me to set this up for them we uh, and they just him. they just turn up and talk which is lovely i've saved him in, in my phone as mummy brilliant 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 um, but yeah so also on the episode we are going to be talking about ingredients in supplements and helping you make better decisions with your supplement choices yes yes mm. yes. yes i agree cool and we're going to do a bit of q a and all that usual stuff to finish off but firstly right okay so i don't know where this came from but it kind of brought back a lot of memories for me uh, personally now there's two subjects here that i want to draw upon and they're both kind of to do with socializing and how your training or your focus affects that so first of all christmas is coming up and usually well these days i'm fairly sociable however when i first got into the gym you know how a lot you come across people that have only just got into to lifting and it they become obsessed with it and rightly so because we all get kind of you find a new stimulus it's very it's exciting ex- isn't it? very yeah. exciting lots of changes and you'll get your training plan from somebody and you'll follow it to the absolute letter uh and then you'll have your diet plan and you'll follow that to the absolute letter you'll be weighing things out which is you know per- you might be weighing things out depending on your uh trainer of course but then it comes to social events. So suddenly people, you used to go out and suddenly now you don't want, you're now worried about going out because ultimately it's going to disrupt everything. It's going to completely ruin this new focus you found. And then that has a knock on effect because all those people around you suddenly see that you've changed and they don't like that. You're not com- you don't want to come out as much or you're not, you're not drinking as much, you know, 
it's a, it's an unusual thing for them. So when I got into bodybuilding, for whatever reason, I was so it was all I wanted to do. I was very focused on it. I followed everything to the letter, and I stopped drinking pretty much altogether. And I had a background of you know the, being in music and stuff and drinking a lot and going out with my you know my friends and my family and and having a good time. Suddenly, I don't want to do that anymore. And for them, that's a very strange thing. And they're like, "What? You know, how how long is this going to last for? What? You know, mm. when when are you going to stop all this, this? phase? When are you yeah. going to stop all this?" Um, but it's not just that. Like for example, my wife, when she got into bodybuilding with me, her family couldn't understand why she wanted to do all this stuff. Why suddenly she wanted to get on stage and take her clothes off and do all this sort of thing, and and why you were so suddenly so obsessed with changing your body and you know why why mm. why are you now suddenly saying no to the ice cream that i'm throwing sure. at throwing at you and f- it's such a strange thing to try and explain to people but what it really comes down to is that sometimes those people around you can't come to terms with the fact that you're 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 different mm. but in the, in their eyes you're different but essentially they can't handle the fact that they they've got this image of you that they portray of you and they want you to stay that way forever that's how they like you mm. But suddenly you you want to develop yourself. You've found something that you enjoy and, and that's changed you in their eyes. And I find that it takes... A, sometimes it's very hard for people to come to terms with. I don't know if you can speak from any similar experiences. I think, I think in a couple of realms, I think one personally and one not so personally, but it was within the family. Like a prime example is when my cousin decided he wanted to go vegan. And I was like, I, was like, I can care less. Like you'll, you do whatever you want. But my auntie, obviously his mum, had a real problem with it. He's obviously been a heavy meat eater. He used to be a world-class athlete for 30 years or something. Suddenly he goes vegan. She couldn't comprehend why you would do it. And she had a real issue with it. Granted now, she she's all over it. She loves making vegan food and stuff. But the first like, few months, because it was so new and like it didn't align with the image she had of her son, yes. she found it really hard. But obviously, like I said, now it's all good. Um, but I think a similar thing to you is obviously when you get into the, the bodybuilding realm and you start saying, I'm probably not going to drink anymore. Probably not going to go to this party anymore. Probably not going to do these things anymore maybe due to your inability to have balance yourself, then everyone's there like, you've changed. I said, well, the, the idea is that change is a bad thing. Change isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes change is actually a very good thing. And sure, you, you may have changed, but if you're not maybe changed for the better, although, like I said, it doesn't align with their idea of who you are, does it not potentially align with a better idea of who you think you are and make you happier? Ultimately, if they can't align with your journey, then they're, I think they're, their lifespan in your life is probably going to be quite limited, depending on who it is, obviously, family, friends, etc. I think um, kind of as this has moved forwards, obviously I developed as a, I, mean, I did, I did competitions and so on. And whenever I was focused on a competition that it, it felt it was fair enough for me to say no to things. But then when you get into normal life and you still want to train and you still want to eat right, suddenly you, you need to take a step back. And now I event, it took me a while to adjust to this, but now like I'm quite happy to go out and I'll have a drink and I'll have a good time if it, if the occasion if it's a worthwhile occasion I don't I don't get home from work and need to drink alcohol anyway but these days I don't say no to things anymore mm. and however let's say if I decided to compete again I would start I probably would say I would say no to things when I was getting quite close to that competition essentially you have to you yeah have to. so yeah. so what I'm trying to say here is is that picking and choosing when to say no to things is important for the quality of your life and also your goals. I think, yeah, I, I think definitely. It's one of the things of, well, I'm, honest, I'm probably sure Mike probably has some pretty good ideas. Obviously, when you went to China, that was a big step. Imagine telling your friends you're going to piss off for a year. That's essentially mm. the, 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 the biggest no's you can say to them is, I'm not going to see for a year yeah. no to everything you could possibly ask me. That must have been quite hard for you and hard for them. The, actually, the most resistance I got was from my family. Oh, it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. They, they were like, who are these people? Why are you going? And they must have like, been absolutely petrified that you were disappearing off to like a different country with yeah. people you didn't, who they didn't know. Yeah, that's it. And I said, look, guys, I'm, I'm 25, 26. I've got a stable career in the company I'm in, but this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And it has everything that's happened in my life to date from that point to now has happened because of that opportunity I took. I took the risk. Mm. Um, and I went for it and but yeah I had a lot of resistance and actually when it all started to go a bit tits up some people were like the worst thing that can happen is you come home but then some people were very much like we knew this would happen like have you learned Rubbing from it, it now and it's almost like 
yeah, I've, I've learned to take opportunities and I will continue to do so. And you could almost see the disappointment. They were like, you've had your fun. Now you need to settle down again. They wanted like, you to get your fingers burnt, essentially. Yeah. And I was like, actually, no, all it's done is just show me that I need to go take risks. Because if I take risks, my life moves forward. If I stay the same and just spin around what everyone else does, then I'll remain the same. And that, that's not what I want to do. I think, we, especially from like the parental aspect, obviously generational differences, is we live in a world where due to that kind of generation they probably didn't have a lot of those opportunities to go abroad to build like online businesses things like that because mm. obviously when my parents were getting to work that wasn't really a thing and now it's more of a thing you don't have to work a standard nine to five office job like they kind of expected everyone to then when you start doing things like i'm going to work in china they're like no you're having fun that's a holiday it's like, no yeah. no that's actually work no like, do you know it, the it, chinese it, work culture yeah, it's horrendous yeah <laughs> it's, it's hard like from what yeah. from people like friends over in china it's 996 dude yeah like, you work all the time yeah it's ruthless but when you kind of step away from the generational norm and you go and say you know what nine to five office work i respect it but it's for me it's not mm. for me personally i'm going to venture do an online business i'm going to go to china and do this because it's so far away from their comprehension when they're Europe, when they were your age they're thinking wow that's, that's, a, that's a luxury it's a trip that's the thing and like change like going, kind of staying on topic like change is inevitable it's going to happen and i think the more open-minded you are to change you actually start to have better relationships with people around you because like going on to talking about going through changes and bringing people along with that like i was saying to chris earlier when i get a new client i say to them are you telling your spouse family that you want to go through these changes and, and put this effort in and sometimes i'll say no and i'm like maybe that should be a conversation that you have because as things start to change just like you've experienced with your life you start saying no to a few things and if they understand what your goal is what your mission is they will then start to realize i need to sacrifice my desire for them to come and do this with me so i can support them not be selfish and just be like nah. there's a big problem that i've seen with personal training clients where they want a certain goal but their partner doesn't want that so they're mm. not so, so say for example it's the equivalent of two people who smoke one wants to give up and the other one doesn't imagine being around someone who's still yeah. doing that and that makes it very hard it's the same with let's say you're focused on your training or you want to diet or whatever if you if your partner wants to eat crap food and you don't that's going to make your life very hard or if your partner wants to drink alcohol and you don't again that's going to make mm. life very hard so then it, you know you need that support of people around you i'm not saying that the people around you have to stop doing those things no, of course but equally they shouldn't be kind of like oh god why are you doing that sort of thing they need to be supportive mm. it creates barriers i think and a bit of friction because people if people understand why you're doing something they might not always agree with it but if they can understand and they love you and they support you then they would they, will, they should really be saying what can i do and sometimes it's just be there for me sometimes mm. it's like actually i could really do with us trying to clean up our diet as a family a little bit so the temptations removed there's all these little things that not only help the person going through the change but they allow the other people in their life to come along with the change which then gets rid of that conflict and then hopefully makes the changes bleed into other people's lives and then other people start to see the value of it rather than it being like oh you just want to go a little fad you just want to do a little thing it's like no actually this is a lifestyle change and i need you to accept that and i have a client yeah. who have got divorced after they've gone through their transformation because they actually realized like we're no this, this, we're different people now i now i have the power back i've reclaimed my body almost i feel stronger mentally physically and now i actually realize you're the reason why my life is spinning around in circles because you don't want things to change and i want things to change it gets a bit complicated i think it's quite difficult especially with someone in your like immediate family or like partner or something isn't necessarily as receptive like for example when i got into like training and bodybuilding to an extent initially my my kind of family's response more so my like my mum and sister were very much uh how long will you keep it up for and immediately yeah. it almost says, like, without meaning to it sets a negative tone because you well, you've, you're gonna you, fail you, yeah you've told me i'm gonna fail and here we are 12 li years later is now something i will i probably wouldn't live without yeah and they're very they, they're, they don't care like in the sense that they're supportive because they don't care like they mm. obviously my mum sees i go to the gym i see her my sister knows all about everything and she it's just who i am so she doesn't care that i brush my teeth she expects me to but she's not gonna be angry at me for yeah. like brushing my teeth like same with training like she it's now part of me and she does we just don't mm. speak about it and she's very supportive in that sense and like, if shit goes wrong with training oh, i'm bad my training was bad then my mom's obviously like when i speak to her, she's like oh it's okay yeah but she's never like don't do it 
you shouldn't do this, where she mm. might have been a bit more at the start because she was a bit worried about me because obviously being a mum, you're going to hurt yourself sure. all this stuff. But you know, I, I think it, when you get into the journey and everyone that kind of expects you to fail or expects it to be a short-term mm. thing because, like I said, it's a fad or whatever, immediately you're a bit like, not really a good foot to start, is it? No, you've like, also lit a fire under my ass. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, it almost like encourages you not to because you feel... It's like yeah. when, when you went to... We go to China... And let's say it goes tits up and you come back with old people are like, oh, I told you this is going to happen. That's going to make you not want to come back just to prove them wrong. That is my life story. Yeah, literally. <laughs> that, is, cool. that is literally the chip on my shoulder that yeah. I carry with me. It's just I hear the certain people that have said to me, well, we'll see what happens. And I'm like, I know what you mean when you say that. You're being a cock. And I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to have support around you, I suppose. But we can't. you can't always get it. But no, it's some, most people unfortunately don't have it. I've mm. had pe- I speak to people in the DMs and they're just like, my partner just doesn't accept that I want to train yeah. them. So they're like, well, sad reality is you've got a question is have you potentially outgrown your partner or are you going down different paths and you're gradually distancing sure. yourselves? Like, mm. Is that really a partner you want to be with or could you be happy with someone else and could they also be happy with someone else too? I think one of the reasons why um, my other half and I have been successful in our kind of uh, bodybuilding stuff and not that I've won loads of stuff, but she has mm. and that was because i essentially coached her but therefore i had to, at times had to push her and at times she had to push me mm. and we wanted you know our you know our goals were aligned so therefore there was no negative vibes surrounding that focus like when we were when one of us was exhausted but we knew we still had to train. The other one would make sure we got it had to be done. Definitely, and it, it was the same same with Jess. Like, it, for some people, it's like it's a sacrifice. You, like, you know, you, you Anna would have to sacrifice things, and and you'd have to sacrifice things to get what you want. But because you're doing it as well, it's almost like no, it's fine. You don't need to explain it to me. I understand what you need yeah. to do, and I'm I'm there with you. We have both taken turns historically to eat a five guys in front of the other one when they're dieting because we didn't want to deny. The, the other, other person one. that yeah. enjoyment so she had a massive burger and i would just have the soft drink or whatever and then vice versa we've had yeah. to do that like in years gone by psychological like it's like isn't it it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like funny in it in 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 a way just because like you're kind of glad that someone's enjoying it though yeah well you found the joy in every part of the process then haven't you like you found a way to make even the shitty things actually like yeah, a bit fine. of a laugh because like you know you, it's going through it Last with people that 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 kind of motivate you and encourage you to be your best and and you you do need some of that around you and it's hard if you haven't got it but Mm. that's why it's good to mix in the circles with people like yourselves like whenever one of us is you know driven towards something you'll get nothing but support from the people around you it's like there's just this instant like i understand where you're what you're going through and what you need um what do you need from me right now i'll give it to you yeah i think in like friendships and relationships in general whoever you're who's in your circle be it your partner or whatever doesn't have to necessarily do the same thing as you no. but they do and they do, sometimes they don't even need to understand what you're doing but they do need to support you yeah absolutely mm. like if you and anna were together and only only she body was bodybuilding and you still supported her your relationship would just be as, as oh, successful I, I agree, because, yeah. because you, you're still supporting her and you may not understand say i'd I personally don't see the appeal but you do and that's what matters it's your body i'm going to support you and do what i can to it's help pa- you it's mm. it's um appreciating someone's passion isn't Definitely. it and i think you have to be there for that so well, i think a lot of people in general just do lack passion for a lot of things you say to people were you passionate about this film no, no, you get ridiculed really. don't you for yeah. loving something yeah. a lot which yeah. is odd actually when you think about it but do you get ridiculed from people who are insecure about the fact that they don't love something that much 100%. and they wish they did it's a mirror man you're just yeah. holding up to them just being like I'm going to make yeah. fun of you for loving something so much yeah. because I haven't found something yeah. I love. Because I'm missing that from So me. I'm going to drag you But I'm not down. saying you necessarily need that passion, but I think it, it's it's really nice to have something where you're just so... It's so ingrained in your life that... Purpose. You, yeah, purpose. I, th- yeah. I think it's genuinely great to to work to excel at something. And I agree. I'm... I, I've, I think I'm feeling a lot of frustration in my life at the moment because I'm doing so many different things. I haven't got the time to really hone in on one thing and make mm. that my my thing that I excel at. I feel like a bit of a jack of all trades at the moment because of my if, if the evolution of my work and so on. I'm, like, I'm good at a lot of things, but I don't feel like I'm re- dedicated to something mm. at the moment. I'm dedicated to a lot of different things, but by doing that, I feel like I'm spreading myself thin. I can completely relate to that. You feel like everything's inching up, but you've got no kind of results yet. But 
trust me, everything does come to a head yeah. at the end, and you're like, wow, look at that. And I think that's why for me, uh, the bodybuilding competitions when I was doing them meant so much to me because it felt like right, I've got these tar- and it's the same when I do the when I set myself up to do the the running events. I've only done one, but I'm now focusing on. I now like the idea of doing the New York Marathon. But when you have these ultimate goals, like bodybuilding shows, for example, like say I was eight weeks out from a competition, that eight weeks, I, you know, although I carried on with my daily life and I would work and do all the different things, at the back of the core of that was my structure that I'd laid out to get to that end result, that end goal. And that meant saying no to things, which is absolutely fine. When, 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 you, want to, when you want to bring the best possible package for something, whether it be a sport or an event or so, and it's absolutely fine to say no to things. And the people around you should support that. Mm. Um, and that's w- and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed feeling like right. This is my focus, and this is this. I'm now going to excel at this. Yeah. Um, but I don't because uh, I haven't got any events or anything that I'm working towards at the moment. I feel a little bit of frustration because I'm because I'm doing a little a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. It's that delayed gratification yeah. thing. I think as well. Like a lot of people. That's why a lot of people don't really see things through is because with a bodybuilding show, for example, you have a set date where you're going to get that tangible result, win, lose, or draw. Yeah. You're going to get on stage. You're going to do whatever. I think yeah. with something like building a business, for example, sometimes that can take years for a result, so to speak, to come yeah. out. And a lot of people just give up because they're like, well, why hasn't it happened? Why well, it's why personal able- trainers become recruit- go into recruitment. <laughs> 100%. Lifespan, I think something like less than 11 months, I think, on average, a personal trainer will last in the business yeah. before they jump out. We've had this discussion before. And maybe, and maybe in the new year, when we get around to January, we'll talk about... Um, Maybe we'll do a do a uh, podcast on how to how to build a successful personal training business, maybe, or mm. just how to you know I don't know. We can we can talk about subjects definitely. Um, but then, so now that I'm not competing at the moment and I haven't got any events that I'm focused for, and uh, coming up to more socialising and stuff like that, I'm actually looking forward to it because. Mm. I've already been in particularly good shape this year because I did a photo shoot, so I got super lean for that, and I feel like I come. I, I feel like I've made some good improvements on my body this year, so I'm quite happy about that. So I now feel like I'm allowed. I, I'm allowed to let let you know things slide a little bit. I can be flexible. <laughs> it's <are> okay. <laughs> I've got. I've got. Why am I? Why am I putting myself through the shit? I mean, even today, I was thinking to myself, why am I not just yamming yorkshire puddings that are put in front of me but i think mainly because i'm going on holiday in two weeks i'm thinking right two weeks i'm going to just tighten up a little bit go on holiday and just after that it's the run-up to christmas i can just relax and Mm. then think about think about being a a boring asshole again in the new year and i'm okay with that and that's just where i'm at right now well i think it kind of flips to the opposite of the say no we spoke about earlier about saying yes to things yes being able to like not feeling guilty to say yes, but also not feeling like you have to say yes to I'm things. going to a Stranger Things event this weekend. For some reason, I thought you said you were going to a strip club, and I was just like, why are you telling me? <laughs> just because we were going to go to a strip I was like, Slight. where's that going? Yeah. Um, but like, I, I think a lot of people feel too guilty to say no in a lot of cases. Some people obviously flip the other way, saying they start saying no because of goals and whatever. But other people flip the other way, say they, they just can't say no because they feel like they're letting people down, etc., etc. Mm. And it's about identifying, saying it's okay to say yes, but it's also okay not to say yes if you don't want to. And there's this guy who I wanted to mention earlier is this guy I watched on TikTok. And he was saying he used to get really bad just anxiety, daily anxiety, couldn't really understand why. And then he started identifying that, although minor, he would tell a lot of little white lies throughout his, his day. And there would be simple things of, do you want to hang out today? And instead of saying, no, I don't want to hang out, he'd say, oh, I, I'm, I'm doing something else, which is a lie. Maybe I'll go back to you. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. no, no, so I've got other plans. It was a lie. He just didn't want to, and he said that was actually making him quite anxious. He got anxious about his. He was open about his drug use, but he not used to say to people, "Oh, oh no, I, um, no, I'm not, or no, I don't talk about it." They eventually just came out about his gear use, told his parents, and they started saying no to people and just saying, "No, I don't want to see you today." Not negatively, just no offense. I'm just not in the mood to hang out. And suddenly, his anxiety disappeared because mm. he, he was just brutally honest with people, and he kind of vowed to himself going forward he would just be non-offensively but brutally honest with people about things. So if someone says, are you on drugs? He goes, yes, I'm taking this. Or if someone says, do you want to, see, do you want to, do you want to hang out after the gym? He'll say, no, I'm not in the mood. It's just it's yeah. that simple. And suddenly, because he was just so honest, his anxiety just dissipated. I think it's almost, that comes into the not feeling the pressure to say yes if you don't want to and actually be comfortable and able mm. to say, you know what, I'm not in the mood to hang out today. Nah, can we do it? Maybe another time. 
Definitely. and not feeling guilty you've let someone down because otherwise you force yourself into a situation you don't really want to be in you probably feel anxious about doing that as well yeah and as Brits we're really guilty of this in yeah. social convention of just being like you know sometimes it's just easier when you're at a party or something just to stand up and say to everyone this has been great it's enough for me now cheers yeah. guys see you my soon my social battery and you is just done leave. goodbye yeah but everyone's just like you do the thousand goodbyes <clears throat> my family are the worst at it and it's like goodbye at the door goodbye at the car get back out the car talk about everything and I'm just like you're going to speak to each other tomorrow. Just leave. Just like know when you've had enough and be honest. People will respect you a lot more if you're just honest with them. I, I set myself when I'm at like social events, if there's more than five people I have to say goodbye to, I just leave. That's fair. Like yeah, if, yeah. There, if there's up to five people, I was quick. I'll oh, see in a bit. I've got to go. See in a bit. See in a bit. Fine. But as soon as there's six people, I'm out. I'm gone. And I just go. <laughs> And it I, works. I've got a few friends that are like that on nights out. So we'll be like, we'll meet up in London. <laughs> yeah. We'll be out, we'll be out in London. There'll be like I don't know eight of us, and then like it will get to like I don't know something something not even that late, but it will get to eleven thirty, and and a particular friend of mine knows that full well that when he reaches a certain threshold of alcohol, he becomes a bit of an asshole. So he oh. takes himself away from the situation, and he doesn't Great. say Great. Great that. Him. Yeah. He doesn't say goodbye. It will just it will just get to a point. And go has has, has, has Phil gone? Yeah, he's, he's just gone. And everyone just gets used to it because he's like, well, yeah, it's, he's uh, just, it's 11.30. But he, oh, yeah, he's, he's not big he's, on... Gu- he's about to be a menace. <laughs> <laughs> he's not big on goodbyes, which is fair enough. And then we'll see him in a couple of months' time if we do it again sometime. Job done, job done. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, do you get offended? No, not at all. Not we, no, not we, at know, all. we know that he's like that. And as long as he's safe and he's, he's and fine, consistent, yeah, then you don't care. <laughs> He's one of the big. He's one of the MVPs of a night out as well. So it's like he gives you this kind of like golden window, and then just like, yeah. just like see you later, guys. Well, if I'm thinking of people leave, it's like I, Batman. I don't care if you leave without saying goodbye, as long as you're safe. Like, the only worry I would ever get if someone's left, I'm like, where are they? Are they okay? Sort yeah, of thing. yeah, sure. But as long as if I know they're safe, I don't care if you don't mm. say goodbye to me. I'm not going to cry about it because realistically, I will probably, hopefully, if God forbid something doesn't happen, I will probably see you again. See you again someday. So it's not really that important. Going uh, back onto the saying yes to things, I think when somebody's new to something, like using fitness, for example, when they don't really know how to go about their goals and how to achieve things, I think a lot of people almost wear like a badge of honor. Like, I'm going to be really strict on everything. I'm going to say no to everything because I want, this is my identity now. I want people to take me seriously. And I think as you do it for a bit longer, you start to relax those barriers a little bit and realize that actually people still can see you as the fitness guy with a drink in your hand like you don't need to be the guy that's with his tupperware in the nightclub just being like sorry guys got to hit my macros and we we all know people that have been there or have been there ourselves it's but we all kind of go through that stage where we realize actually we can have balance and still get what we want the thing is if you don't if you hyper isolate yourself or go to the extreme or anything it's just not sustainable and you will either slip up pretty badly or fall out of love with whatever you're doing. You, yeah, if you actually develop balance, you can you can remain more consistent, therefore probably achieve your goals better and be happier while doing so. Don't get me wrong, there's a caveat there. If you are on a schedule and you do need to do that 100%, yeah, yeah, then yeah. everyone else in the group needs to be like, no, this guy or this girl, yeah. they've got a deadline to reach. We need to support that. Yeah, but that. most people don't have like that immediate deadline of he's got a show. But him. this is what I mean. Yeah. If you're new to it and you're just getting into it and you're just like, I've got to eat more food and then you just become that guy. We've all been there, or girl. Yeah, We've I all was, been there. 100%. I was very guilty of that for I was, a good few years. Protein shakes in my hand all the time because oh, I've got to get my protein in, yeah. guys. Anabolic window. I used like, to take food to parties in Tupperware. And yeah, like, yeah I went to a wedding with Tupperware. Yeah, love it. But did you have a show coming? Yeah, it was. For, uh, it was. It was like three weeks out from. A there you go. Yeah, well, you get a free pass when on start, that. Then when I start prep, completely. I'm be every event. Yeah, every event I'm taking Tupperware with the empty Tupperware. It's just like, so I can imagine the food. If you're like prepping for an exam, and you got to revise, and you're like, sorry guys, I got to revise. Like yeah, people were understandable, understanding of that. Like it's the same with a show. Like was it? Was it Lucy who or some who's doing revision between sets on squats in the gym yeah Love yeah that. respect it love to see it <laughs> i'll get it in <laughs> getting it done getting it in yeah um but yeah so i think i think that pretty much covers it really i think yeah. that's a good boun- bouncing some thoughts and feels around there Definitely. i feel yeah good stuff all right okay um yeah we'll move on shall we i was just thinking Stop actually yeah. we have a massive tv screen in here what we should do is plug that hdmi cable into the camera and then we can see ourselves on a massive screen whilst we're doing inception do that. <laughs> that'd be amazing i don't know if i want to see myself on a big screen it might make you look in the direction of the camera a bit yeah but more. also feel like it might make me look over there so everyone thinks i'm talking to an audience that there are exist. guys there are guys there through that window that are watching us <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, right, okay, cool, 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 cool. I feel like I need to... Okay, moving on to our next key subject. 
that we decided to talk about. And we on the last show, we talked about citrulline malate, which was a, a very core... Cool, well, it's a good component for pre-workout, uh, as we discussed. Um, but that kind of led us on to thinking about ingredients in general. Mm. Yes. So basically, when you get, when you get a supplement, you know, a pre-workout or anything in general, you take any kind of supplement that's going to have an ingredient list. Like some, no, but the first thing you see with a, with a, when you go into a supplement shop, right, is the crazy array of designs and colors. Yeah. And, and you, ha- yeah. And ultimately, people will buy the ones, buy certain products that scream at them the loudest. Surely. How many people actually, that's me. how many people listening actually look at the ingredients? There the you panel? go. There probably, you go. probably not as many as you think. They'll be like, I like the color of purple. That's looking purple to me. The guy on that package looks absolutely raging. I want that. It's yeah. just a mirror. How many words <laughs> can we put on the label that sound like fitness words? Anabolic fuel mass size. Oh, you got IGF no. one. I don't it? know what that means, yeah. but it sounds great. What was the USM sounds one? Like steroids. Anabolic muscle fuel. Something. Yes, but, uh, that was yes, me. Yes, I yes. had that. The I had black that, tub. The, yeah, the the that bucket. gave me lactose yeah. intolerance. I'm fairly that sure. That gave me a lot of problems. <laughs> And it didn't give me any anabolic effects. No. Well, I don't understand how there. they can put words like anabolic on whey protein. If something anabolic, I want it to be It's just the industry enhancing. is just not properly regulated. It's even worse in the States. Like, yeah. they don't even need... Because, like, well, I think we talked about supplements before, about how they used to put all those interesting ingredients in, make them really strong, and then pull them out, and yeah. then the brand is, is gone so yes, far we with did it. say that, yeah. Yeah, and then they just swap out and change the label and change the company and do it again. But yeah, you're right. How many people actually, when they... What, do, they do they question why they take a certain supplement? And do they question the contents of that product? as to whether it's going to give them the desired effect or do they just take it because either someone told them to or the advert in the magazine looked good or they saw it in a shop and some some guy said oh, I think this is really good I think the other thing is if you do look at the ingredients I don't know I don't know <laughs> I was like where are we where are we now if, if you do look at the ingredients panel how many people actually know what they're looking for there you go. That's, that's almost yeah. like the next step so let's uh, expand on this a little bit give us some examples of what Different products, maybe that are that people that are good products that we believe in, like say, so your whey protein. What are you looking for in a whey protein? What are you looking for in uh, an EAA? Is another mm. subject we talked about. What are you looking for in a pre-workout? And anything else? Go. I think ultimately, when it comes to protein, the primary thing I look for is protein content. Mm. Someone goes someone say whey protein, but they say oh, eighteen grams of protein per serving. I'm saying like, mm, it's not really enough for me. It, it, I'm I'm looking for the the. Is it called some of the two? It, 25 yeah. to me is like a really good because you're going to probably double scoop that anyway do you, yeah, mi- yeah. do you mind the source of protein if I can it depends on if I digest it I'm not too uh, the thing is I want it to be ideally more of a, a complete protein which typically comes from animal based sources something along those lines but I also want to make sure I can digest it well because I've had some proteins that I've taken it and suddenly I'm like oh I'm going to be mm. sick in a you've had a beef protein powder I have, I have it. Yeah. I've never had it before so I remember when uh, we were sponsored by Biotech USA. They did I a remember pr- it well. They did a beef protein powder, um, and it was just a bit weird. I mean, it tasted okay, but I what mean, flavor was it? I can't remember. It was just like your, tip- your, your typical kind <sighs> of chocolate flavors. It wasn't like Bovril flavor. Like I was gonna say like uh, Oxo uh, Cube, literally yeah. a Spag Bowl flavored <laughs> Spag Bowl way. <laughs> your spaghetti in it, like wee. That sounds all right. I mean, if you commit, if you were gonna do. If you're going to do a beef protein powder, just commit to good quality yeah. savoury flavours. I want beef and onion. Yeah. Give me that. I'm going to be honest with you boys, I think I'm going to call it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's too much flavour. I'll just try it roast, roast dinner flavour. Oh, yeah. I'm not mixing roast dinner with milk. <laughs> and I, you know I'm not putting water in my shakes. Yeah. No, no, you, do you not? Dead. Do you not? No, I'm no mi- I'm milk. I can't. Well, the only one is or the clear, milk clear milk. way yeah, out of my protein. That's the only See, one I can have of water. Water every time for me. That's now, when you're, on, you're, when you're on the calories, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm hunting for any gr- any singular calorie. Texture. I so, like a bit of thickness from the milk. Yeah, I do agree that milk does make whey protein taste amazing. But I've to, if you get good quality powders... Then, you say good quality water. I was like, if you moss. get good quality powders, then essentially they should still mix nicely with water, I would say. I'm not too fussed about the mixing. I'm more too fussed about just... Like I said, the thick, I want a bit of I want a bit of a milkshake. But not everyone needs all those extra calories, mate. Oh, they no. probably have and all also, the, milk alternatives. You're gonna do you realise you're gonna get to a point when you're dieting for this competition where your your 
viewpoints on all this stuff begins to change. You also don't want to go too far and go mutant mass style where you get a shovel or a wheelbarrow and you have to put it all in. I will tell you my mutant mass story. Have stories. we not done the mutant we mass have. story before? Oh, I love it. When it that, if I wanted all four scoops, it filled my shape to I the brim. a blender with that Honestly, shit. Honestly, I remember the first time I ever put three scoops in it. This is legacy I, convo I right here. I chewed it. I'm very sorry if you've been with us from day one and you've that heard this. That shit clogged my sink. Yeah. And it also clogged me. Chocolate hazelnut flavor come in a what was it, a massive red bag oh honestly, yeah that it, does you sound smell familiar. it and you could smell the sugar and it honestly it made me so unwell right like, really unwell I loved so, it. so with protein then i agree with you i'm looking for amount of protein and also if it's quite a lot of powder and low protein i'm questioning what else is in that See, powder. blend i when i'm looking at a protein this is why i'll pay a little bit more for an isolate because essentially it strips out a lot of other crap so sometimes you'll get protein and it'll be like a, a whey protein. It'll only have like, it'll only be like 70% protein. Mm. And the rest of it's going to be like, sh- sometimes a lot of sugar, sometimes a lot of fat, and sometimes God knows what else. Bulking agents normally. Yeah. You yeah. read it and it'll be gums and things just thicken it out and it doesn't do it anything. It can be a bit of a false economy to buy cheap whey proteins is all I'm saying. Mm. Value, uh, value yeah, isn't I, price, is it? Yeah, I, I typically found that the cheaper the protein, the harder I find it to digest. Yeah, mm. and to me that tells a lot. Like, if I take a pr- drink a protein shake and I feel like shit afterwards, immediately I know whatever's in there is probably not what I need or not what I want. And if, and if you spend less money on something that you don't drink, yeah. then you're wasting money. So you might as well just bought the nicer one, yeah, which so you're going to drink yeah. more of. So that's the I find one that tastes good, that has the protein content and the protein source I, I desire, and also sits well with me. And I'm I'm pretty laughing, to, and then I probably won't deviate from that brand yeah. for. Well, I won't need to. Yeah, exactly. You want to get comfortable with the product. It's nice to stay with it. Yeah. Okay, so that's whey protein. Let's talk about EAAs because that's a subject we've talked about in previous podcasts. Obviously, people used to have a lot of BCAAs, which you know is basically pointless. Mm. Um, but we have been an advocate of EAAs in the past, haven't we? Yeah, I, I think it's never going to make or break a physique. I just think they just have more of a place than BCAAs. Do you need them? No. Do you, should, you, should you spend your money on them? Don't need to really. If you, don't if you want, want to. If, you if you do, want to, yeah, sure, I do. If you do want to know more about EAAs, then scroll. I can't remember which particular episode it is. I'll have a quick look now. Um, but yeah, we have talked about it in the past, mm. but do carry on. Yeah, so we obviously you want to look for the one that contains all the essential amino acids. Right? I believe you're like nine or something. Yeah. And But the key one, especially in that sense, when looking at like the building blocks, we'll say, is going to be leucine. Obviously, they're all important, hence being essential. But leucine is the one you typically refer to as like the the... The, arguably the most important depending on what you're trying to get from it mm. but also leucine itself tastes like shit leucine oh, is re- really bad it's tasting. horrendous it's I really bought bad. an unflavoured leucine once and I literally nasty. like vomed that yeah it's right nasty up. but then flip around EAAs themselves taste okay like they yeah. taste fine and it's the same sort of thing you probably look for how much it costs and how much it, the cost is per serving and how much you get per serving of ideally at least 10 grams. Do you remember with BCAs when the ratios would just get ridiculous when you'd oh, get like 12, 1, 1 and yeah. like 9, but no one, one knew what one. any of these and ratios like, meant anyway. What so. do these do? And it's like, I don't know, but you need them all. Yeah, if it's bigger number, it must be better. A good thing with... Um, not BCAs, but EAs, is obviously if you have a diet like a vegan or a vegetarian mm. diet... Fills that is a little bit more incomplete proteins, so that will help you. Incomplete protein gap. That will that will help you out a lot, and it is fairly cheap um, as a supplement. Yeah, they're not bad. I mean, I spend was it probably about twenty pounds a month on maybe twenty pounds every five or six weeks on EAAs. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's not bad. Anything like you know how much food you have to eat to get that complete yeah. protein if you're yeah. a vegan or a vegetarian. So that and creatine are definitely two you need to have yeah. as a vegan or a vegetarian. Yeah, I do think especially because obviously plant based sources, like you said, typically are in a lot mm. of cases incomplete proteins. It's nice to f- almost make up for the deficit. Yeah. Um, but again, also just finding one that tastes nice. If you're going to drink it throughout your workouts, because typically they are consumed, don't need to be, they're typically consumed intra-workout, is that you want it to taste nice enough for you to actually want to drink it while you're training. And they come in great colours, normally blues and oranges. I've and got orange. a red one in my car right now. <laughs> and sometimes they smell pretty pretty funky. Blue I sling my green. EAAs down with my citrulline, as I said. Yeah, the last one. Just has it as a pre, throw it in, have a good workout. Good pump. pump. Good pump. Good, good pump. pump. I think also there. Obviously pre-workouts we spoke about before. <laughs> yes. Um, but then what I, you know, there must be other things that we're looking at for a pre-workout. Did we specify that in the last show? We, I think we touched on it. We spoke about beta alanine, mm. obviously spoke about But really what, what, you know, what would, if you had to pick a pre-workout, obviously you don't take them anymore, but what would you go for? 
like back in the day, I'd look for one that wasn't essentially filled to the brim with creatine. Because I get my creatine elsewhere, I consume that as a separate. I, I wouldn't. Cons- you control mo- the intake you, of that. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't control the intake of that through my pre-workout. Yeah. And ultimately, I think because mm. creatine's so cheap, they use it as like a bulking agent to fill it out, so it looks like you're getting more for your money. Yeah. yeah. While this tub of pre-workout's huge, it's just mostly creatine, proprietary mm. blend. So ideally, unless I'm looking for a stimulant-driven one, it's typically going to contain three of the big ones I'll look for is citrulline, malate, beta-alanine, and caffeine. Yeah. And then the big thing to then register there is how much caffeine. Because you get some which are like 100 per serving, which is fair because you have multiple servings, but you get some monsters that are like 350 milligrams per serving, and you're like, geez. Caff- caffeine's an interesting one because it's actually um, help, it's a pain, it blocks the pain receptors, mm. which, is an, mm. which is a reason why caffeine's a popular pre-workout because ultimately that will allow you to push a bit harder i suppose and the caffeine obviously per is the perky thing isn't it mm. but then you get like taurine which is what is in uh red bull and things like that isn't yeah it? monster and well. monster there yeah. you go um taurine's a very popular pre-workout and green green coffee extract they're all these kind of different forms it's basically like different types of caffeine mm. essentially aren't they i think taurine helps potentially with like um transportation of nutrients and things i think i think if it's if i've got that right so that's why they tend to put it in like pre-drinks because it helps with like blood flow and things but i think with pre-workouts you've got to think do you want a stim or a non-stim yeah because that will change well there's pump what you're looking there's for. pump products aren't there yeah as i get older i i can understand the appeal of like stim driven pre work especially if you've got like a if you a busy job yeah. where you need mm. that boost if you can't get, get up for your session yeah i could be get that but as i get older and older i kind of when i was younger i thought the idea of taking like the more caffeine the better yeah. wow it's a ritual cool. isn't it yeah it's i want to cool. get off my face yeah. on caffeine and then you realize oh, i feel really unwell but then <laughs> as you get older and older you and if, if you don't need the caffeine you look so actually there's a lot more value in just pump based products not for any reason it's not going to maybe make help me make gains but it just makes you feel a bit better I think feel like I'm, I'm, I'm mental health yeah. pumps. I think the mental reason the reason pump. why I don't take pre workouts, which I said before, is that it affects my sleep. So therefore, we've talked about optimizing your uh, productivity in the gym before, and one of the key things we've always said about is the quality of your sleep. So if you're taking all these crazy stimulating pre workouts, then and you're, but you're jeopardizing the rest of your life as a result of that, then really you're not getting the progress you think you are. It's a net negative, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Yeah, and that, that's how that's my personal viewpoint on it. So what therefore, I'm looking for a pump, which is great. So therefore, you know, controlling carb intake before a workout, controlling, as I said, citrulline malate before and, uh, you know, EAAs and so on. They're not pump uh, in, as such. But mm. they're, for me, avoiding mass stimulants is a, is a sensible thing. What's the half-life of caffeine? It's like five to six hours or something along yeah. the lines. It's and there is like an... Um, diminishing returns on it I, th- I can't remember what the research was but there was over a certain amount of caffeine you could consume before your body basically just didn't really see the yeah, benefits yeah. of it anymore i what? actually found water is actually been something that i've started drinking a lot more in the last few years before i work out and i found that's had the biggest effect i mean on my water and water and salt are two yeah. of the big ones that i've started trying to hammer a lot it's more mad of. isn't it they're the most basic things but like for example sleep water salt i mean mm. if, if that's the takeaway point here to, to get better you will save you a lot of money. You're better welcome. control over those things. You might get better workouts, better sleep. It all has a knock-on effect that improves things. Like since since I have stopped doing morning cardio, um, so I might get up and go for a run in the morning, but I'm not getting up an hour earlier to go to the gym to do my cardio. I'm therefore getting an extra hour of sleep every night. I have mm. felt this year has been more productive in my physique changing. Mm. simply because i've had a much better sleep pattern that's that's Mm. been far less disturbed by uh kind of aggressive dieting caused by more those morning cardio sessions Mm. where i'm getting up at 6 a.m to go to the gym stand on do an uphill walk when i feel like absolute like i feel like shite since i've cut that out and then and now i just go for a run when i feel like i'm energized to do so Mm. suddenly my my sleep is better and I, feel, I genuinely feel like my body has responded better this year yeah. because of yeah. that. That's a metric that um, in coaching that we use your sleep in order, especially with people in a deficit, because if you find your sleep starts to get disturbed, you're almost thinking like it might be worth putting you back in a maintenance for a bit because your body is now responding badly to that. Um, so sleep's an important one. So if you're finding that you're getting better sleep because you're now not getting yourself up, disturbing your sleep pattern, getting more hours, um, sounds like a smart move does indeed and i feel like that's enough supplement chat 
Yeah, I think the only other one you touched on is creatine, in which case creatine is creatine. Does mm. it have creatine in it? <laughs> yes, does it have enough in it? There you go, fine. Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. have anything else but creatine in it. Creatine is awesome. Like, in, yeah. Yeah. Interesting though, though. Like, Yes. And all, there was some historic kind of talk, chat about creatine loading and then f- like how you should do it. Yeah, bin it. Bin that. Get rid of that. Somebody just wants get, to make loads of yeah, money, dude. Get rid of that. <laughs> if you try to make loads of money from supplement, creatine's not the one that's too no. cheap to make loads of money Depending from. Depending yeah. on how big you are as a human being, I'd say five to 10 grams at any point in the day. I have it post-workout often yeah. With, yeah. with carbohydrates, as I said before, to help it travel. I just have five grams every day. Yeah, just same. Just before bed with my yeah, yeah. multivitamins and shit I think creatine is one of those ones that I was listening to a podcast a while ago where they were saying about how the benefits on the brain for things like dementia and it's Alzheimer's mad, like they actually think creatine might be something that is just supplemented to the general public in the future just well, on I, um, the NHS or can something can you imagine I looked one at day, briefly maybe. as Paul like when I was doing my MSc one of the mini projects we had to look at was um, potential cognitive benefits of creatine. Mm. And although like the study was obviously very limited because it was like a mini project, so we didn't really find any conclusive evidence, but there was some of it suggesting that actually if we conducted this thoroughly and properly, it could actually highlight that there are some cognitive benefits to mm. regularly consuming enough creatine in your diet. Yeah. Because you probably get about a gram a day from eating your meats and whatnot. Yeah. But again, that, that five grams is pretty key. I also wouldn't track the gram you might be getting. That's... Yeah. Pretend you're not. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And that brings us round to our final little segment, which is a little bit of Q&A. We haven't got a huge amount of time wow. for it. Um, but as I said before, we had a nice message from Lena from Germany. Love Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Love you. She just uh, put forward two questions, which I'm going to throw at us very quickly. Uh, I often hear that. I often hear about that you should stick to a workout plan for X amount of time before you switch things up. But how long would you recommend to stick to a program without changing anything? Because I'm quite happy with my plan and I'm still making progress. Yeah. You've answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> I think ultimately, like, the- I sometimes get a little bored after 12 plus months of oh, the okay. same movements, and I sometimes change split squats. Hi, Harry. For lunges, play me on it as well. Oh, for, the devils. For, yeah. lu- for lunges, for example, but don't if don't fix it if it isn't broken. Is that right? I think ultimately, yeah. To a large extent, yeah. I think realistically, you really consider. L- I say like a. As, I guess a block typically lasts depending on the goal depending on the phase all that stuff but I'd say maybe about 8 to 15 weeks before a variation is added but when you add variation it doesn't mean you need to change entirely so I might say you know I'm going to do stiff leg deadlifts and then next block after 15 weeks I'm struggling to press them now I'm going to do deficits stiff leg deadlifts mm. it, it, switch very, it up it's, it's the same movement I've added yeah, a variation yeah. to make it a new movement a little spice but as Mike Israel says he goes if you're, if you're leg pressing for, you've done it for 15 weeks and you're saying okay, my, my block's over 15 weeks is done I'm a bit stale on these movements but my leg press is still going well guess what do leg press again yeah like a, it's like a runway it. isn't it you, yeah. you've built up this skill acquisition why yeah. would you suddenly then go learn something new and spend all that mm. time building that up yeah. when you could just still keep going yeah like it, it very much comes down to the fact of I think blocks typically can last any time really but let's say about 8 to 15 weeks on average mm. But again, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Don't change something for the sake of changing something. Change something when adaptive resistance is occurring through, becoming Definitely. stale, you're not progressing. Mm. Maybe motivation, you're struggling to yeah, motivate yeah. yourself to train because it's oh, I'm bored of doing the same work. It's been mm. 10 months now. But again, like if, if you're running, if you're going well, then keep it going well. It's, you can do the same, even with a bench press. If you move your hands like one or two fingers wider, all of a sudden yeah. it's a new movement. Yeah, literally. Then it, that might be all you need. Yeah. It, drastic changes don't need to occur in programming unless something drastic is changing mm. your goals sort of thing i think but equally to say that don't be quick to change something because you're not making progress maybe you just haven't been patient enough yeah maybe you could become more efficient with the movement these standardized techniques so you actually lift properly definitely it's like, well it's moving yeah. well i used to think i mean i'm the same with like deloads and stuff it's like you don't actually having a set deload is not a good thing because if you're you're going to limit your progress like you said if you get to like i don't know the fifth week and you're feeling great don't suddenly start deloading mm. keep going extend the block keep going you still have clearly more potential to squeeze out of this don't just be like well my coach said you know, yeah week five is a deload it's like no maybe if you play if you program correctly and you periodize your program you probably don't need a deload i think like i typically would deload at the end of every block more for me prepping to start the block if i need it yeah so let's say i've done like a 12-week block end of my meso cycle and they're like you know what, before i start the new block i'm gonna ch- change the movements i need to change mm. now 
deload so I can get familiar with those movements. Yeah, like there a, you go. And then yeah. go through it. But again, if, I, if I'm like, you know what, I'm feeling good, man. Don't need deload. I'm not going to deload. Flip it around. If I'm feeling week six, I feel like I've been hit by a train. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, oh, I can't deload for six more weeks. Yeah. No. No, you no. probably need it now. You need again, to change something. I Pay attention. You can, you can yeah. have an idea of when you might consider a deload, but I, I'm, I, let's say, listen to your body. Mm. Don't deload over here. Uh, unless, apart from when I go on holiday, in which case I just don't train. It's going to have to deload itself yeah. to an extent. I mean, I train a little bit on holiday probably, but I'm generally never been one to do much deloading at all. But I think maybe, maybe that's why I always get to a point when I feel like I need a holiday. So mm. therefore, that's my body's way of saying you probably should deload. Yeah. So let's go on holiday. Sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sun. You, you start holiday. noticing like getting little niggles here and there. Yeah. Yeah, then maybe yeah. maybe you need a bit of a deload. Like I probably deload less frequently than I should um, and I let niggles occur mm. at that point, but I also push push the intensity of my training probably higher than i should just because it, it's much easier trained failure than he's trying to guess what two reps in reserve is 100 percent. so i'm yeah. saying you know i'm just gonna go to can't go anymore <laughs> then i don't have to think you'll have to for the time there's nothing on e- the table even though i know from a like from a coaching perspective i wouldn't program someone to do that because it's not quite ultimate if there are better ways to do it you'd essentially r- gradually increase intensity throughout the the block mm. but for for my perspective I think because I've done this for 12 years, I have like a pretty good tolerance to f- failure. Yeah, yeah. Whereas all of the clients I work with haven't been doing this for 12 years. They're quite new to maybe a couple of years in. I feel like you kind of do need to identify reps and reserves so you actually know where mm. you are. And so you're not pushing to the point where you need deload every four weeks because yeah. you're failure, 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 death. In my first session with a client, I will literally be like, right, we're going to train into one rep and reserve. I want you to tell me when you've got one left. And but we're going to keep, we're gonna keep going. Accurate. We're going to keep going. So they'll look at like rep 12 and they'll be like, one more. I'm like, okay, just keep going. And then we get another Ten five or six later. reps and I'm just, and they look at me and they're like, mm. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, studies <laughs> have actively highlighted that people are notoriously bad at gauging where failure actually is. Oh, and I, it's yeah. hard. I do it to myself. I'm yeah, not in the yeah. mood to train. I'm yeah. like, well, that's definitely two. And yeah. someone's like, you pussy. Because at the time, <laughs> it feels like it's moving at half a mile per hour. You watch it back and boom. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, coach. <laughs> I think that might be another topic for another ch- uh, another podcast about how tra- how training partners can be useful for progressing. Accountability as well. Help, you know, keeping you in line. Anyway, um, there is one little extra question which we can answer very quickly uh, from Lena. Might as well finish her off. Not uh, in the nicest possible way. Um, you, gonna kill her? <laughs> you may have tickled this in the rep range episode i like when people use that language i know I, you've, you've, you've I love it corrupt- it oh, i said it the other day and yeah. i almost nearly left the room harry oh, corrupts yeah. people with I his love his it. youtube vernacular Ooh. um thank you um but are four sets really too many for strength and hypertrophy purposes if they are why mm. i don't think it's ever a it's preference. Like I used to do four sets yeah. of everything, and now I've kind of dropped down to three sets of everything. I do six sets of four on something. Just well, to give that, context. yeah, but then that's a completely different style altogether. Let's say I, I think in the context of like strength training, like for powerlifting, I think it's like I used to do eight sets of three on deadlifts. I think in the powerlifting realm, you, there's probably a lot more merit to doing higher sets than is mm. in the hypertrophy realm, and like the strength training realm because obviously the reps are lower, etc. But then flip around the hypertrophy realm. I personally I don't like doing more than three sets because I find if I'm pushing to failure more than three sets my rep are just they're plummeting so if yeah, my rep yeah. range is five to ten I'll ten then I hit eight yeah. then I might hit five and now I'm and just you know you're n- done, now I'm yeah. in the bin mm. do you mean so I typically I, I my favourite is two my um my hygienist love it said to me the- have you heard of uh, German volume training? Oh, get in the bin. Don't know him. <laughs> 10 by 10. Don't know him. Honestly, did it a few times when I was like, younger. Didn't uh, know I did that once. So I didn't need bust my hip flex. I <laughs> couldn't sit on the toilet for five days. The Try guy, when you can't sit down. The guy who plays American football. I said, I said, I said, look, you play American football. You want to be an athlete. Do you really want to absolutely destroy your body for the purposes of sport? by doing 100 reps of something. Annihilation. Probably not. And just maybe you want to be stronger and more explosive and more athletic instead of doing 100 reps of a particular exercise. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm trying to think, is there a flip side? I mean, that amount of reps in a in in a training session, I mean, yeah, you could get really good at learning something, like practicing well, no, something. You get really good at the movement. The methodology of it was always like, you've got like 10 to 20 seconds rest between doing yeah. something at like... You just can't drive. The output is just going to be so it's low. So and also shit. the intensity in the, the earlier sets of like the first five sets you'll be like 10 reps in reserve which from a hypertrophy perspective it, you're not going to get shit to i don't know i just feel like even moving the needle is yeah it? i think it's just a kind of fatiguing exercise and it's yeah. just not a very good one well i think they typically say that you should hit failure around set nine 
and then set 10 you get like a, a second wind but ultimately <sighs> if you're hitting failure around set nine let's say set eight is an effective set as well sets one to seven because they're going to be so far out you're of just like, holding the squat rack up yeah, at that point yeah, they're, <laughs> sounds they're, like a load of bullshit to me because sets one to seven almost outside of the the proximity of I guess sufficient intensity for hypertrophy junk they're, they're wasted sets yeah, you're not hitting junk. anything I'd rather just do heavier set heaviest three sets mm. and then actually get something for less volume less time but more benefit i think do you think that's maybe where someone's looked at like tonnage like in a workout and they've said yeah you do thousand kilos yeah, i think yeah. someone's just re- just recommended it and they've heard it from someone who else who recommended it and it's just like the classic kind of gym can, gym based hearsay do you reckon someone's just really bad at maths or is that like <laughs> how many re- is that a zero hundred looks like a zero hundred ten by ten they're like why makes sense maths anyway <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, with the sets, I don't think it's a right or wrong. It's preference. Yeah. Like, we have different preferences. But again, it's also goal dependent as well. Yeah, I know. I, I hear what you're saying. I think with strength, you can you can mess around with reps and sets. You can go higher in, like you said, with with sets because then you think you're doing, if you're doing seven times three, that's, yeah. that's 21 reps. Yeah, and yeah. then when you are moving through that periodization of accumulation, intensification, realization phase, yes, but with hypertrophy, I think driving failure is obviously what you need to be yeah. pushing. Because if I do seven sets of ten and ten's failure from the first set, I'm doing I'm doing one at plus, the end. Plus if you're doing two or three sets or something, you can get onto the next thing and then get out. I, yeah. 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 I think for me, since I changed to doing three sets of things, I feel like my body's less stressed. Yeah. Than doing I when I used to do four sets of everything. So essentially I've I've reduced my workout. Let's say I do five to six different exercises. I've reduced my workout by five to six sets. And mm. therefore that's five to six less stresses on my body. I, and it means I can push higher weights essentially. Yeah. And it makes sense for hypertrophy. With strength, you can, you, there's a bit of an argument there to be made. Yeah, no, I agree. Really. But I I'll think we could we could argue else. we could argue rep ranges and time under tension and all these different things until the cows come home. But ultimately, cool. different strokes, different folks, mm. different goals, and different definitely don't shoals. lump it all together. What I think is that nuance. There's no, there's no one idea of optimal. You're a nuance. Optimal is what's optimal for you? <laughs> like my optimal is different to Mike's optimal sort of thing. Yeah. Even if we had the same goals, even if we both wanted hypertrophy, our optimals would be yeah. different. I'm very good with fast twitch stuff. Mm. I've noticed now doing my training block with my coach is mm. I, I actually really respond well to low reps. That's good. I don't do twitch. <laughs> twitch streamer. He's Podcast a twitch streamer. He's not moving over to YouTube like everyone I've else. I've moved over to YouTube, yeah. I, moved over I, read, I read an article about it the other day. Yeah. I was like, well, it made sense to for me to keep everything under the tier. Yeah, definitely. Umbrella. So I've rebranded as well. Good Enough. stuff, man. Building go. that brand up. He knows it. You wait, see what happens in six months. Madness, that's what I'll tell you. Really? Yeah, you will see. I'm going to have loads of time coming. soon to jump yeah. on a stream with you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we hear me scream every... Honestly, I hate it. I get bare embarrassed. I, I'm bare jumpy when I'm playing horror games. I scream. And I can't control it. It just... Woo. Have you played the one with the uh, autopsy where you're in like the place with the the morgue one? The once that's the what's, one. I don't know. It's got a system. Yeah, I haven't played it, but the girl do, I stream do. with, she, I've watched her play it and shit me. I, she, I was watch, she was streaming and I was watching her stream it through Discord when we were in the chat. So together. jumpy. I was screaming. See, the good thing is, guys, I can actually fade their microphones down, um, <laughs> so they actually they're talking, but you can't hear them, which is fantastic for you guys. But anyway, this has been. So uh, Episode 16 of... Uh, I'm going to bring you back up because I'm not that guy. He's a power trip. He's a power trip. Power trip. <sighs> I'll, I'll fade power you down trip. again. Nerd. Um, look, this has been a fabulous episode. Uh, episode 16 of Pump Fiction. Um, as always, if you want to contribute to the podcast, do follow us on Instagram at Pump Fiction Pod. And that, from there, there is a link where you can submit your questions Correct. for the podcast. You can also send us any embarrassing stories or anything you might, crazy things you might have seen in the gym. Tell us how much you love us. You can massage Harry's ego a little bit, as he's just said. Um, You can do that directly. His uh, Instagram is Harry uh, underscore TFNL. I am at Chris D Fellows and he is Radical.Mike. And this has been us. Us. Hello. Pump Fiction. A mess. Don't say hello at the beginning. (laughs) I mean, uh, again, guys, uh, two new presenters would be fantastic. Um, one, I'll settle with one if you're really good, um, but anything to improve on these toilet bros. But must be over six foot tall. <laughs> Say good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.